Welcome. This is Chapter 11, Biomechanics, Angular Kinematics. This is Part 1 of 3. Uh, there's a lot to go over, so we're going to break it up into three parts. Uh, try to watch one and then discuss with your group, and then uh, move on to the second and third parts. Uh, we've already talked about linear kinematics. We've talked about the difference between uh, distance displacement, speed, and velocity, and then acceleration. Those are the big pieces of that chapter. We're going to take those same ideas into angular kinematics. The question is, how do you analyze something moving at an angle, such as a bat, or a golf club, or a shoulder throwing arm, or a leg punting a ball, um, things as small as elbow motion and uh, finger motion, knee motion. We need to be able to measure how an angle moves in order to talk about the range of motion of uh, activity. So we're going to start with angular kinematics. We have um, uh, what is called a relative angle, and this is how we talk about range of motion, or RON. We're talking about the, the change in angle between two imaginary lines. So whether it's the ulna and the humerus as it goes through its progressive motion, or the tibia and the femur of the knee. Um, when we talk about a relative angle, we're talking about the, imaginary, uh, sh the shifting of two imaginary lines that would perhaps uh, intersect through a single bone. Um, Zero degrees is measured from anatomical position. So if we describe the elbow as in 90 degrees of flexion, we are simply saying it has gone 90 degrees from the anatomical position of neutral. Um, that is true for all joints in the body. We can also describe change from one motion to another. So we may say that the elbow moved 30 degrees into extension if we were to start at 90 degrees of flexion. Um, and finally, for part one, Measuring joint angles is very difficult because the instant center of rotation is always changing. One of the easiest examples would be uh, vertical abduction in the shoulder. The humeral head is meant to depress inferiorly as the shoulder is abducted. This requires that the center, the axis of rotation, actually drops inferiorly as we travel into abduction. So clearly the center of axis has actually depressed through abduction and then uh, elevated through vertical adduction. Um, the center of rotation is often changing. That makes the instant center uh, different throughout motion. Let's carry on with part two. Take a moment to talk about this with your group.